doing that life with intent. Right. I hear it all the time. Right. You know, I think when the going gets tough, the tough get going. That That's an easy thing to say, but in reality, that's not what happens. You know, um, people get excited about something. They, they have they're, – they're motivated, right? Well, motivation ends. You know, you, you know Andy has a straight-up obsession with being number one mm-hmm. and winning at, at, at all costs, you know. Not at all costs. I mean, he – he appears to be a family man, and he, he's good to everybody, all his employees and all that type of stuff, but with a specific goal in mind to win, you know. And um, there's not a lot of people that have that. No, and we, sh- we should all strive to win or do better or be better. And, uh, y- you know, I always think back of this story. I was when I owned the tequila company. We landed this big national account. It was um, Tillman Frittati's, the, lo- the largest privately owned restaurant group in the world. It's got 565 restaurants, and we landed them as a client, and we were in over half of his restaurants. And people would come up to him and say, how did you do that? How did you get in with those guys? It's so hard. And I, I would always tell them, I said, you know, the, the answer is very simple. I committed to something, and I did it, and I followed through on it. And they told me that that's why I got the business, and they also told me that most people never follow through on their commitments or what they're willing to do. And it shocked me at the time because there's such a, you know, a big deal to get that account. I thought, why wouldn't more people follow through? But then as I went through life thinking about that, I find it all the time that people say something and they never follow through. And you feel like they've got good intentions, but that's where it stops. It, exactly. Even with the simple things, that's exactly, you know, what, what I have written down here, which was, wasn't much, but, l- you know, live with intention. Be good with the simple things. And what I mean by that is follow through with the simple stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. whether it's opening the car for your wife. You know, we got these electric locks now and stuff like that. When's the last time you walked over to the passenger side if she was a passenger and opened her door? Right. Be good with the little simple things, you know. Um, So, yeah. And, you know, going back to Frisella and what he talks about, it's like it's the little things that people will forget to do, become complacent won't complete and then that is going to eventually catch up with them with the bigger things you know so if you got a good foundation of doing the simple things and everything like that the bigger things that you bite off you're going to be able to chew and not spit out well I, lo- I love thinking about the simple things it's uh i always have this little story about my daughter we were at the grocery store and um we're coming back to the car with the shopping cart and everything, and she's looking around. She's like, Daddy, why are all these shopping carts, like, everywhere? You know, she was, I think, five and a half at the time. It's a pretty decent observation. I said, oh, well, people are too lazy to take those carts and go put them in the, in the rack where it says carts, you know, return carts here. Right. And she's like, oh, are we going to return ours? I said, of course we are, right? So we unload, and she goes with me, and we return the cart, you know, and go back to the car. And uh, I would probably say maybe two months later, we were at Target or something, and, you know, I am I always park in the back, and usually there's not a cart return way in the back of the parking lot because I got this big truck, and um, I took the easy route. I pulled the cart, you know, the stuff out of the cart. I threw it up in the planter like we all do. <laughs> well, not we all, but like a lot of people do, right? Yeah. I get in the car, and my daughter watched it all go down, and she goes, Daddy, you're not going to leave that cart right there, are you? <laughs> I was like, damn it. <laughs> got out of the car, went and got the cart and put it back. You know, that's been two years now. The I've, daughter accountability. The daughter, I've, I've never left a cart again. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's the little things, right? Andy talks about, uh, you know, people that leave uh, pee on the seat of the toilet. Yep. You know, it, if somebody leaves pee on the seat of the toilet, he says, that'll tell you everything about that person you need to know, right? Uh, either they don't give a shit about you, so they just left their pee on the toilet for you to deal with. Or they care so much about other people that even if it wasn't their pee, they clean it up and leave the restroom better than what they found it. That's right. <laughs> and, and you hear stuff like that. It's hard not to go into a restroom now, public or private, and, and think, well, am I going to leave that pee there? <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I don't know what you do, but <laughs> I've been cleaning it up lately. <laughs> oh, I can't stand it when you go in there and there's pee all over the seat or something like that in a public restroom or something like that. Yeah, know. yeah. Um, I, you know, these shows are usually quick and there's a few bullet points worth talking about and, you know, remembering. So, so far we've got goal setting, identifying values and living life with intent. Um, as you set those goals and Justin, I'm going to throw another topic on you that I didn't tell you about, but it's pretty simple. Uh, but as you set those goals and you start thinking about, you know, who you are, what you can do, 
Uh, matter of fact, we both did 75 hard in 2020. We did. Right? Yes, uh, sir. We talk about that a lot. Hey, real quick on your 75 hard program, what were a couple of the values you got out of it? Uh, that 75 hard program, I, I, I talked in length about it before in previous podcasts and stuff like that. But, I mean, it, it is a life changer. And one of the things that, that – um, it, it, it helped me learn how to be present and engaged with what it was that I was doing, not necessarily mm-hmm. with the family, right? Cause you're doing your thing, right? You got to do that. You got to do those five things every day for 75 days. You know, my, my days revolved around the program yeah. because I, I wasn't going to slip. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, but it, it, uh, again, it, it, that, that's why that program has helped me out with my goals of 2021. Be good with the simple things. It's mm-hmm. the little things. You know, most people fail that program, or a lot of people, I should say, fail that program because they forget to take a picture of themselves every day. Yeah. That's the easiest thing you can do. Yeah, sure. Right? It's, sure. It's the little things. It was like getting home. You know, I, w- I would work sometimes 12, 15, you know, 18 hours, right, and have to get the two workouts in and everything like that. And then I'd be – completely tired when I get home to bed and know that I had to get up in four hours to do my workout before my work shift started again. So would I meal prep and get my food ready or would I just go to bed and say, oh, I'll take care of it tomorrow? Well, yeah. the, the, the latter doesn't work. Um, it's the little stuff that, that, that makes the foundation that builds the confidence that gets the momentum going so that you can accomplish the bigger things. So that, that was one of the biggest takeaways that I got from that program. One, uh, that I could do things uh, that I didn't once think that I could do. Um, matter of fact, you know, I know you're probably going to do 75 hard again. I'm going to do I'm going to do 75 uh, hard times two. I'm going to do 150 days mm. straight. Awesome. With the same program. Awesome. Just because uh, I benefited so much, I think uh, mentally from that, I learned a lot about myself. Some things came uncorked, um, but. Um, I'm ready. I'm ready for the other challenge. Yeah. Well, and, and I feel the same. It was life changing for me. And what's interesting, I didn't do a lot of posts on my social media about my program. I did a few. I did post a couple of pictures because I wanted to try to inspire. And uh, that's the point that I wanted to make. I think the biggest value I got out of it, the discipline wasn't as hard for me because of my Spartan racing and you know, having the discipline to train at that level in Spartan racing. But what I really got out of it was the value that my kids were getting out of it. Watching them watch me and ask me, like, hey, you're going to drink all your water. Hey, you're going to go out for your your outside run, you know. And knowing that I'm teaching them the values of discipline, working out, a good diet, you know, and instilling those things in them. To me, that was that was a big value for me is understanding that about my kids. But I also, I had a lot of feedback on those few posts that I made, specifically this one uh, lady I went to high school with, I really haven't talked to her in 30 plus years, but her name is uh, Kate Pound. She had lost 52 pounds on the program. Her doctors had told her that um, she's just going to have to get used to being heavy and there was nothing that she could do about it. And she thought, that's not for me. And she signed up for 75 hard. She was inspired. And she just finished uh, December 26th. So kudos to her for doing that. That's that's ridiculous. That's her, awesome. That, her, it's ridiculous that her doctor said that, for one. Yeah, yeah. Her life has changed because of this program. And by the way, it's a free program. So I'm going to continue to promote it. The reason why I wanted to bring up 75 hard is because it is hard. And uh, I wrote a blog uh, for this month. Um, if you haven't been to my website, the livelifedriven.com website, I do two blogs a month. And the blog that's coming out in the next week for January is how to manage and overcome imposter syndrome. And it is exactly what it sounds like is uh, anywhere from 9 to 82% of people experience imposter syndrome at some point in their lives. So it's, it's not really a psychological disorder, but it is your own feeling of inadequacy and doubt that you have the ability to complete something or do something or be something, right? right? So in this case, like 75 hard, when you look at the program, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't stop drinking for 75 days, you know, or eating chocolate or, you know, I can't do two workouts. Don't get wrapped up in imposter syndrome, right? Right, Because you are capable of doing anything that you put your mind to and an easy start to overcome that. And I'd love for you to read the blog if you're listening to this. Again, it's going to be on my website in the next week. Uh, an easy way to over, start overcoming that is start listing out your accomplishments, and you'll realize 
all the things that you've overcome that you're capable of doing um, as it relates to feeling like you have imposter syndrome. So it's kind of an interesting study. Uh, thinking positive is, is a big one. Having a life coach is a big one. Um, you know, having people help identify what your talents are and things like that. But I would say finally, just being confident in your own abilities that you can achieve things. I mean, look what happened when you did 75 hard. You were a new man when you came out the other side. Yeah, I was, I, you know, after 75 hard, I think I lost over 40 pounds on the program. And mm -hmm. it's not a uh, it's not a weight loss program. It's a mental toughness yeah. program yep. uh, for sure. And uh, then I continued on and lost up to 57 pounds, I think, before um, – I, uh, I, I I stopped monitoring everything like that. But, you know, one of the things I have to say about that is, you know, you look at 75 days, and you're like, oh, my gosh, 75 days. It's 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 overwhelming. Um, so for those listening who are going to try this program, and I hope that you do, I think everybody should give it a shot. Um, and I think everybody should uh, succeed in the 75 days. Don't look at it 75 days. You know, I caught myself looking at, okay, hey, I got to get through today. You know, and for me, it was it was like a challenge. So I was I was I, I can't remember other than one time, day 70, mm -hmm. where you kept my program going um, because I was tossing in the towel. I had 103 degree fever. It was a covid breakout thing. I had just been quarantined inside the ER and uh, they said I didn't have covid. They said I, I had the influenza or whatever. But by the time I got out of that quarantine, they kept me for, you know, half the day. It was like 3 o'clock. Yeah. I, I hadn't done one workout or anything like that. Um, I was pounding waters out of a little, out of, out of little you know, uh, the cups that they, they give you in the hospital and stuff like that. And anyway, um, look at it, you know, every day. Don't look at it like I got 75 days left. Go, hey, I got to get through today. And these, I only have to do these things. And yeah. if, it gets, if it gets too tough for the day, just go, okay. I only have to do this one thing right now. And you do that and then go, okay, I got to do this one thing. Again, it's only five things. Yeah. Um, but for 75 days straight, it's no joke. Well, and that's par for life. If you have a goal or a dream or a business you want to start, if you spent five minutes a day on pursuing that dream or that business or that goal objective, those five minutes add up over time. Just think in a month how many minutes you've spent on that. So don't put anything off as we roll into 2021. Hopefully uh, the country sees a better year from pandemic and politics. I know I had a great 2020. I don't say that lightly. I feel good going into the next year, and I'm, and I'm charged up. So goal setting, identifying your values, living a life with intent, considering a 75 hard type program. I think it's one of the best ones out there. And don't get wrapped up in imposter syndrome. So That's right. um, it's a good way to set your path off into the new year. Thanks for listening. Froggy, any, hey, any final I'll, thoughts? But yeah, be good with the simple things. And, you know, 2020 as, as a world, you know, you're going to see on the media and everything like that how terrible it was and everything. And it, there were some – it just kept going and mm -hmm. going and going. Hey, you know what? Hit the power button on that thing. Don't pay attention to that. Pay attention to what's happening underneath your own roof, within your own mind, and uh, get after it. That's all i got to say about that. That is some great advice. Well, again, if you want to read my blogs, livelifedriven.com. This podcast is also aired on that side. Thanks for tuning in. Look forward to bringing the next guest to you soon. The door is open. This episode of The Answer is Yes brought to you by Baja Bound Insurance Services. Driving to Mexico? You can buy and print out your Mexican auto insurance policy online in minutes with their easy-to-use website. They also have great travel information to help you plan your trip south of the border. Visit BajaBound.com.